what's going on everyone Tyler here and today I'm going over some color correction with Double Premiere CS6 and basically this color correction can be done in earlier versions of Premiere but what cannot be done in earlier versions of Premiere is the adjustment layer now first I'll go over how you make an adjustment layer it's actually pretty easy I got a bunch of folders in here let's do this just go down to where there's nothing or you hit this guy right here new item and adjustment layer but ow and you want to match your project settings so that's how you make an adjustment layer. I already have one in here and we just basically drag and drop into the timeline like so but uh, we don't need that one there <clears throat> now you can see how this one, uh, this clip is the uh, finished color correction clip and I have one right here which is the raw footage off my uh, Canon T2i and uh, I was using a reflector I was using the gold side of the reflector. I thought it'd be nice to warm them up a little bit, but it made them a little too warm. You can see his teeth are yellow, his eyes are kind of yellow, and uh, this looks a little bit on the uh, orangey side. So in this particular guy right here, I adjusted all that. His, his uh, teeth are not yellow, his eyes are nice and white, and let's see how I did that. And basically I did it all in adjustment layers, so you can see this. I love this about adjustment layers. You can turn them off and on. You can see how I'm using layer two or video too, and I'm using a little eyeball and I'm hiding it and revealing it. So let's go into the nitty gritty here. Let's go into the uh, effects controls and I have one, two, three, four, five different uh, color correction adjustments that made this work correctly. So let's turn them off and I go one by one through them. Now um, most people do color correction, they'll go in there and they'll add like, you know, color here and there and some curves and that's how they adjust it. See I took a little bit of red out, but I noticed that it was not going to work because it's way too red. If I drop the red out even more, it's just not going to look right. It's going to start to look, you know, nice and green. Let me undo that. So basically this way, I understood at this point where this is not going to work. Uh, if I want this to look how I want it to look, I'm going to have to add more color correction tools. So I added another layer. And if you look, you probably didn't say anything, but look closely to his teeth. I'm going to turn it off. Yellow teeth. Turn it on. Nice pearlies. Now, how did I do that? Uh, basically, it's in the secondary color correction. A lot of people don't use this. Uh, I haven't seen too many tutorials online on it. But uh, basically, you can make a mask. And basically, the way the mask works is you select your color, which is the teeth, which I selected. And I'm not going to hit it and then start messing with these and throw all my adjustments out of whack because this can be very tedious. But I'll go over real quickly uh, what all these do. The hue is basically going to select these type of colors in this range. You see it's selecting a little bit of red, selecting a little bit of yellows. And your saturation is going to pick how much saturation throughout that color it's going to um, select. And these guys on the side, this is your main slider. And if you drag this out and drag that out, it'll feather out how many colors it uses. Kind of like, you know, a little, uh, gives you a little more wiggle room on the colors that are being selected. And your Luma is basically Luma channel. It's going to select more of the bright colors and more of the dark colors. If I drag this all the way down to the darks, it'll pretty much almost select everything that has any of that yellow and these colors in it. So that's what I did. I selected those. And what did I use? I used RGB curve and I turned the mask back off and I pulled more of the reds out added some more blues which basically uh, made them white so let's go on to the next set which is this three-way color correction and what did I do here ah okay I don't know if I did a mask but you can see I didn't mass mess with any of these uh, three-way color correction tools basically highlights midtones and shadows that wasn't what I was at the um, reason why I use a theory color correction is because it has a master um, um, sorry, saturation slider. And let's see here. This video, Luma. Where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, saturation. That's actually that's secondary color correction. But let's show the match real quick. Oh, there's saturation. And uh, I went to the match of saturation, which is basically going to control all of these uh, saturations in one, not just controlling the highlights, midtones, or shadows, because if you do that, it's only going to pick the shadows, midtones, and highlights, the saturation for those particular um, color values. So uh, let's go into the mask. Let's show the mask, which it is not showing the mask. Why is it not doing that? Up, oh, yep, and turn it on. All right, and there's the mask, and you see in this mask, I've actually softened the mask. And let's go down in here where it's at. Uh, da, 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 there it is, just your soften. And the reason why I did this is because 
sometimes you don't have very many colors to choose from and I'm gonna turn it down and you can see right in here how I'm starting to get into the uh, crappy compression of uh, the T2i and DSLRs not all of them are bad but you know the cannons are pretty good the uh, new compression Kodak on the Mark D3 is excellent one of my coworkers got it and I got a chance to use it and this would be a lot smaller dots in here but basically what happens is if you don't feather this let's see what happens you see how these uh, particular dots are changing drastically and you'll get a really uh, obvious change in your color correction because it's not feathered out it just won't look natural so all I did was soften it up which is right here basically that gives you a little wiggle room again and doesn't make it as evident when you're going through the colors now everything's nice and smooth now so that's how I did that so let's minimize this one or I just collapse it and oops, not forget to turn off show mask so you can see your final composite and these and the um, order this goes in is very important because if I were to move this up to the very top it would actually change the saturation because of what I've pushed here so you want to work in these in stacks and just remember which order you put them in and if these shuffle around you won't have the same effect so now I went to hue and saturation and I just basically took the saturation out because it was a little too saturated and you know some monitors that might look okay but uh, when you're doing color correction you need to think not only your monitor think a broad spectrum of monitors because TVs will have a lot more contrast than your computer monitor which basically is his reds in here will be a lot more saturated and it'll look very funny on a TV monitor so I kind of dumbed that down because I wanted to add some more depth to the image, a little more contrast. So what's the best way to do brightness? And, I mean, add contrast is with brightness and contrast. And it will add nice, deep contrast. And it will also boost the saturation when you start playing with these values. So that's why I desaturated it. So basically, that's um, how I ad added all that color correction in there to this clip. So we went from this to that. Original footage to your color corrected footage. I thought this had a lot better look and looks like he's actually uh, brushed his teeth as opposed to this one where it looks like he just spread parquet all over him. And this gentleman right here is Anthony Chappelle. Uh, check him out on DC Metro Plus on Facebook. Good guy, good actor. And uh, let's, let's move on. This next clip I have here was, is a different scenario with color correction. It is basically one, two, three layers. Let me turn these off. Oh, there's the logo. That's already off. Um, and you can see how it just looks pretty uh, flat, doesn't look like anything was meant to be in there. And that's where color correction comes in. Let's go to the finished color correction clip, which is right here. And you'll see how everything's nice and dark and it looks like everything is supposed to be there. I added another layer right here, which uh, if you hide everything else, you'll see that uh, basically it's a blur. And I got you know a lot of contrast on it. And I made it a screen, which basically all the black will be jumped out and gone. And it'll add a nice little little glow to your, you know, because a lot of times 3D objects will look a little flat. So adding a little um, glow to them or something that makes them look a little soft kind of tends to bring them into the picture more so they don't look like they're so separated. And basically in here, let's turn that one off. What I did with this clip was I just really uh let's see i forget all right here we go i why is that doing that well looks like i turned some of the red down and then it added a lot of contrast but doesn't contrast to it so it really pops out at you and that took some of the saturation out like i said before and you, you want to adjust these clips that look the best on a whole bunch of monitors not what looks best on your monitor so if you have like maybe a TV that you can output the clips to watch your clips on a whole bunch of different monitors so you can get a good idea what they look like across a spectrum of monitors so let's uh, the finished clip here basically oh I have a lens flare here too it's basically is just a let's rebuild this in the project uh, yeah it's basically just a still image and I animated it, gave it a screen filter so the black could be dropped out. And let's close this and bring this back. And let's look at effects controls. Yeah. If you look right here, it gets bigger, 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 bigger until it goes down. And you can see how everything is pretty nice with that clip as opposed to this right here. 
I'm not sure if I'm playing in real time because I do not have one of those cards that will do real time video playback. But I'll do my best here. Well, not too bad. And you're going to see it's a huge difference between the two. And that pretty much is the whole idea of color correction and color grading. It's just one of those things that you use to further enhance your video and your projects to give it that nice, dramatic, warm look. Well, that's it for today. Peace out to you guys and have fun working with Premiere.